We're here at a secret location outside of LA with two specialists in their field. Brandon Russ, soil agronomist specializing in cannabis field, and one of the guys that's built out more high-tech lights than some of the top cultivations throughout the country. Sean Surreal Yields. We've met these guys before on the show. Wait till you see the collaboration that's about to happen. That's the reason we're out here. We're starting here in the clone room, the transplant room. This is where the magic happens. This is where your genetic potential starts. We're gonna to talk to Sean and Brandon a little bit about how special this room is and what their plans for this are. We got a few different things here. We got regular clones that come here from the mother room. One of the rooms just got transplanted and then we got some new things that we're working on, r and is clonal seeds. And the clonal seeds, are what you say is every single seed looks exactly the same so it's one pheno produced from a mom so this is where the r d is happening this is where everything starts this is where life starts we do a three-day transition yep. three-day veg in some terms and then we go to the flower room and we try we start flower the same day so i just want to give you guys a little bit of a background what i did with these lights i had the affinity lights and i chopped them up in pieces Kept the um, ballast outside of the rack, put, put outside, put all the clones inside, and I took the worst, worst clones that was all gonna be rejects, put them in the rack. Three days later, those clones were the best ones just because of the UV and the IR, the way it works together. So one of the hardest parts is consistency across mediums and being able to have consistency and quality across mediums, be able to produce these products with different mediums. Absolutely. So that's gonna be awesome to see because now you're seeing the same strain being run multiple ways and you can almost pick and choose how you want to enjoy it. Yeah. That's very cool. And to see how this collaboration is gonna come about with the three day veg, six day veg, depending upon medium, and then this facility being almost like the racehorse and R&D for it, Absolutely. very cool. I think the idea too behind, you know, having a multi-tier system like this, having really short, short veg times, is because when you factor in long veg times, the amount of resources that you have to expend to get. The amount of variables you're adding to yeah, very quickly. Yes, and, and think of, oh, you know what was interesting too from an integrated pest management perspective, right? Because when we take clones, we dip our clones before we put them and then after they're rooted, we dip them again. If you're only in veg for three, uh, three days as opposed to three weeks, there's three additional weeks that those things could be potentially exposed to pathogens or pests. This will be a cool project. We got Brandon, who's done organics and focused on agri agronomy. And then you got Sean Stizzy, who's focused on scalability in the business side and really focused on top tier cultivation. So them coming together, this is gonna be very interesting for the industry. We're here checking out the system. Sean keeps going to work. Keeps clocking in and clocking out. <laughs> What are you most excited about out of this facility? Dude, I mean, when you look at around at this, what's not to get excited about? I mean, look at, we're talking about state-of-the-art cultivation. We're talking about one of the badass, the most badass dudes that's, that, that's done this. And me coming on board to do the organic side, I mean, dude, I mean, come on. It's, the, it's this, like, again, when you have high quality organic product some people want that a lot of people want that you know it's because of the experience that comes with it like he was just saying it's not all about high thc and it and even in california look at i think the laws were just recently changed too right and all of a sudden what do you see oh there was a total drop in overall thc percentages overnight we we as as professionals, people have been in this, we know this already. We yeah. know it's all about the Terps. We're always chasing Terps. That's why all the heady kids know, that's why they're all smoking live rosin. It's because they want that flavor, they want that experience, and that's what we want to provide together. I'm, that's what I'm most excited about, be able to work with people to bring that experience to the masses. I'm most excited about you being so interested in the R&D phase and now having this guy in the ring with you and to see what's gonna come out of this. And when I say industry-led, 
for people, from people in the industry leading this charge at this facility, right? Which is rare. A lot of times there'll be a brand attached to a facility, but it's not the person behind it like Sean and like Brandon yeah. who can lead this charge and also know who other people they should tap into. Hey, we should do yeah. this with this person. We should bring this person into the fold. Hey, let's use this technique or yeah. what do you think the best technique is organically for this? The amount of nuance technology that's going to be learned out of here with him employing organic techniques and you seeing the actual plant reacting to this and you said you you hit on the head a few other players are coming on board too this facility is not just me him it's all of our facilities so like we talking a few of our few of his buddies i met that day a few of my old school buddies we started in this well they started way before me but you know, they're, they're coming on board. Some really cool breeders. He asked me a question about it earlier about breeding, right? I don't want to, that's not in my lane. I'm staying in my lane. Let me do what I'm good at. You do what you're good at. That's why this facility is no ego facility. This is what we're going to do, what we've all been doing and supporting each other and growing together. That's what I feel like this facility is better. Is this facility going to answer the question, can we do organics at scale? Yes. Okay, you seem very confident. I already know. So we've seen the beginning. We've talked a little bit about how this passion and how this project came together. What are we going to see next? Let's start with the mom room. We saw the clone room. This is my favorite room. This is my favorite room. Sean, what's the importance of this room? This is traditionally the mom room. But what are you guys going to be doing here? Actually, you came here at a time where I'm resetting the mom room. So every four months, we do a full reset on the mom room. So we do a full cleanup internally, HVAC filters. Cause you know, when we, when we harvest our flower rooms, we do that anyways, right? But our mom rooms never tend to get that cleanliness because we never take out plants. We can never do anything because we always have it full of plants. But because of being able to start from seeds, you know, resetting your moms, having some space where you can start, you know, you can grow your moms into a week three, week four level of, uh, moms before you start taking cuts off of it. That's what we do, these four, four month resets, full cleanup internally, kill everything, move everything out of here, bring all fresh, brand new, sterilized plants coming in so we could continuously not deal with, people talk about what's your IPM, what's your pesticide sprays. You don't need to do that if you keep your mom room clean, if you keep your clone room clean, you know what I mean? I'm against all that. Whatever comes in, yes, you take it through an IPM process, or take it to a quarantine process, but Anything in your facility, if you sterilize it and give it a specific amount of time on transition, you're never going to run into those problems. So you don't have to worry about pesticides and worrying about molds and different pathogens and different viruses coming into your facility. Which is, I can honestly say, probably the rarest thing I've heard of is cleaning your mom room out. And that's crazy to say, but because of the perpetual growth cycle and because that being almost like your vault, most people just, just keep it clean. And it could be years before they actually pull the moms out, clean the room like you would every other room. That's a very interesting thing that I don't think a lot, I think a lot of growers or facilities skip over because it's, it's a vault. So just don't, they don't want people going in there. They just, just leave it, just leave it alone. Leave it alone. Yes, don't very interesting. It's true. No, you gotta just so with it. IPM on moms, is that any different than IPM throughout the rest of the process? <laughs> So you should definitely have a standard operating procedure, especially if you do have insect pressure. You know, ideally you want to make sure that everything's clean to begin with. You want to keep your facility clean. You want to implement biosecurity practices. And if you do that, you shouldn't really have to do much. I know that in living soil, we always take preventative measures just because there are potential for things to proliferate. And you know, when we're talking about soil food webs, when we're talking about organic material that's in that media there is always a potential so it's there's a saying an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure you know i am not the type of person that wants to go to war if you're going to war you fucked up somewhere you know what i mean you shouldn't be having to do crazy amounts of integrated pest management you should just have some basic standard operating procedures around again biosecurity and plant management, how it's being handled. So this is a fixed cost. Every four months, you know what it is. So it's, a, it's just a flip over. That's all it is. What are you looking most looking forward to out of a room like this, out of your mom room? 
me personally, when I have, I, I just, you know, keeping everything healthy, nice and clean, and then just making sure that uh, we have a good schedule for me, when we need to take cuts, right? They all have to, everything has to be timed, right? The logistics, the logistics is really, really important because if you miss a day or two days, it sets everything back. It changes the whole dynamic. Yeah, they have a good leader and they have data-driven results and that's number one. And that's what's gonna be cool about this collaboration. And we're gonna constantly bring it up throughout this is that we have data-driven results, things we can actually look at charts, tests, side-by-sides with organic inputs. It's gonna be yeah. epic. I used the Roya, you know, talking about yeah. data, right? When the Roya first came out, I had a, before Roya even came out, it was GrowSense with uh, Grodan. I started running this in like 2015 in my farms, like multi thousands of lights during that time, gathering this data, seeing how these things work, different media, soil, chum, Rock wool, six by six, four by four, three by three, but every single thing that there is been out there, including HVAC, I've used in this industry. Or overall. Yeah, shout out Ramsey, Arroyo, another great innovator in the space. You've probably seen him on First Smoke of the Day. We interview guys who are legends in the space or becoming legends in the space, leading the charge, breaking bounds, uh, really showing the rest of the industry what can be done uh, with the right leaders. Our room one. So we're obviously in veg, or no, we're in no, flower. This is flower. Yeah. Most people are used to seeing a veg like this since you guys are cutting those, those flower times. We loaded this room up on Wednesday, and flower week one starts, day one starts on Monday. Wow, that's incredible. And so all the plants in here will go to flower in. Two days. two days so you can see the starts and how small they usually are where most people would now do three weeks of veg you're able to get around that with your data driven results so what else are you r and d in here what else is going to happen I have different types of media ones the cocoa bags how well do they retain the moisture and i have the breathable ones how well they re retain the moisture we're going to do some of the neutral pots as well. nutri grow pots, Nutri-Grow yeah. grow pots, you know, mixing with the cocoa, see how well they do together with some of the nutrients that we're running right now. So there's a mix of different R&Ds. We have multiple tanks that we can do different types of nutrients in the same room. So we see like what's working well, what's consuming well, what's strain, you know, the strains are all about the same, but how well the organics come together with the, in, uh, with the hydroponics. Yeah, so one of the benefits of the products that we uh, distribute and that we make is that they can be used across a lot of different media types and so for instance you know cocoa itself is an organic substrate you know so it's although we're typically using synthetics it's a substrate if you inoculate with like microbes for instance you can help reduce st uh, osmotic stress that's related with uh, salts it can help with out competing pathogens and help uh, creating healthier microbiomes in that media, and that's gonna have a net positive benefit on the overall growth and quality of these plants. So if you're looking to get into organic cultivation, cocoa is a viable option. Absolutely, so one of the cool things about like modified growing mixes is that they're either peat or cocoa based. Now in just straight cocoa like this, I've had uh, people cultivate where they're using 60% less of their salt input because they're also implementing the humate fertilizers. And even when, and when you do a system like that, what happens is the, the uh, salts, the ions, when they disassociate in water, they are grabbed on by the fulvic acid. And so they don't create precipitation reactions and actually increases the use efficiency of that fertilizer. Typically, you know, you'll hear the term drain to waste. The majority of what is being put in there is actually being wasted you only get about 10 to 15% use efficiency out of what we're putting in here. So our goal is to decrease the, uh, the waste that's associated, also reusing media. Typically what you'll see is people will throw this out. And they're yeah. like, oh, we'll have... that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. If you have a facility like Sean has here, you could re-blend that, rebuffer it, you know, wash it if it needs to be, and then reuse it. So you're you know, decreasing your 
your uh, footprint, your carbon footprint, essentially. Again, we wanna create the highest use efficiencies and we wanna create environments that are going to be conducive to the plant. Yeah, we're investing in machinery to where we can start taking our cocoa and rewashing the cocoa, cleaning it and reintroducing it. And Almost like recycling the yeah, medium absolutely. to be able to propagate yeah. it again. When it comes to GMP compliance, touch points are something that's written into the SOPs. The amount of times that you can actually touch a plant and Not when we're the plant, even like the cleanliness, people yeah. being in the room. It's basically you know? creating pharmaceutical grade environments, you know, which w with, you know, through the SOPs and, and the, the techniques. And that's how they're doing it when you're, if you're, let's say Germany, right? Germany just opened up. They're, in, they're not cultivating in Germany. They're, I mean, they just opened up, right? And unless it's traditional market, you know what I mean? Import. It's import. import. And yep. so places like Canada or places like Colombia, right? And though you have to have GMP certification in those types of places to be able to do your export. So one of the focuses that we also want to do is scaling this out GMP compliant. Oh, wow, California, let's go. I mean, we've been talking about this for years, right? I mean, like we always say like evolution, evolve, evolve, evolve. This is the business evolving. This is what we're, by default, we're going towards federal regulations. You want federal regulations? Well, get ready, guys. This shit's about to be fucking wild because it's just more money out of our pockets going to more red tape bureaucracy type of stuff. Yep. Do you take lessons or do you think people will take lessons in other aspects? Like I'm seeing like really high end strawberries in Japan and like other fruits and vegetables that are being uh, coveted as expensive and boutique. Do you think that this technique will be used or is used in other forms? Absolutely. Funny enough, you said that. I was telling the other day, I'm like, look, bro, we're growing vertically, right? Just like microgreens, just like vegetables, everything else. God forbid, World War III, whatever that is, you know, God forbid that shit happens, right? But if it happens, you know what the federal government's going to do? My friend. Like the draft. Thank you. We need you to start growing food now for our military. We need you to start growing food for the human, for our people, right? That's what's going to happen. This is all ready to go. This is all indoor cultivation. No pesticides being introduced, like you said about the strawberries, right? Strawberries outside with everything, with pathogens, bacteria, viruses, everything in being introduced to all of our berries, to everything we eat today is all sprayed with pesticides. I ain't got to spray anything in here. And that's scary because those are thin skin fruits. So that goes cancer. right We're in. We're talking about patients, yeah. right? We're talking about people getting sick and all these hormone blockers that are in the plants going into those same hormone yeah. blockers going into our, into our children, bro, so into, my own, into our kids. Me and Sean were having a conversation about this on our way over here, and we were talking about food and mental health. And you see a huge problem with mental health in our country, and it's right. all related to food. You have to remember big companies like Monsanto merge with Bayer because food is medicine, and if we're cultivating food that has no nutrition, just carbohydrates, we're not getting the zinc and the calcium and the iron and the manganese and all the things that our cells and our bodies need to function properly, that to make the right types of hormones, to make testosterone for men, to make estrogen for women. We have all of these artificial synthetic things that are always being force fed to us and it's changing the dynamic, not just of our own physical chemistry, but the way that our perceptions and the way that we uh, view the world. Yeah. The your own chemistry. Your own yeah. chemistry. In your balance. Of course. Yeah. Your internal balance. And that's what's going to be cool about this place is I'm, you're such a, a data-driven person, Sean, that I'm very interested to see the collaboration here and what you find. Because I feel like it's going to send some shockwaves through the industry. There's going to be some changes made that's, that's, off of tech built at this facility. You've seen what this collaboration is about to bring. We're gonna get into the future. We saw the mom room, we saw propagation. We're seeing techniques already applied that you haven't seen in other gardens. We're about to show you the future of what this looks like behind the scenes. What are we seeing right here, man? I mean, this is epic. The I mean, look at this Bay Area. This facility is prime for a large explosion of work. Lights, well, we everything. Few, we got a few different things we're gonna do here. We're gonna start mixing our own cocoa. Uh, we're getting a really good source of cocoa coming in with blocks. We're gonna wash it, break it down. 
pot it, bag it, use mix, it for buffer, a, all that mix stuff. buffer, everything all at once so we could just balance everything out per like what I would use for myself. Like look, a lot of people like, you know, sell you products, a lot of people do things, but I want to develop something that works for me and actually I can stand behind it and develop it and continuously keep developing it, right? We're also working with uh, Nature's Miracle, okay? We're gonna do a bunch of container grows, fully automated container grows, where one person that wants, that has a property that just wants to drop four containers, five containers, double stack, triple stack, however you wanna set it up. Five in one, we call it, where you have your nursery area ran by robotics. You have your flower, single level, dual level, triple level. And then you have your processing, and you have your for irrigation, and then you have your storefront, all in one. Or if you don't want a storefront, you could grow microgreens like that too. It's just the same exact setup, right? But all automated. So this is all gonna have this one full setup of containers, multi-level container grow, Damn. and bringing in four, four megawatt container of battery pack, two of them with solars, to generate my own power here. So all this is gonna be basically grow pods? Yes. Wow. And that's not that it, engine? folks. And that's <laughs> not it, folks. Move, let's go check. Let's Over go this. Check this out right here. Yeah, how insane is this? Both these buildings are there. And then all this, guys, you see, all this is gonna be grow pods, like you see here. Yeah, what a what a facility. This is amazing. This is like a compound. Three buildings, three separate purposes, uh, all being data driven, uh, all being owned and operated by people from the industry. Really cool. This is what it's about. It's about collaboration. It's about people from the industry putting each other on and keeping it in the industry and not gatekeeping, but making sure the right people stay in. Sean, explain where we are right now in comparison to the rest of the, it's basically a compound with multiple buildings mm -hmm. and each building serves a different purpose. So like this is gonna be single level, um, not single level, it's gonna have one story of triple level inside and the above one, when I was telling you I'm gonna do the indoor greenhouse, I'm gonna remove and I'm just gonna, for every one of those shifts, it's just gonna be glass, 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 glass. So it'll be your greenhouse above your Indoor. indoor so a three-tier indoor garden and Plus then above the that the fourth tier on top of the basically the roof of the yeah. grow rooms yeah. will be double tier in, indoor greenhouse that's insane this is going to be interesting and this is a perfect building for that what are your feelings on that that's some innovation right there yeah i mean that is all in one That'll be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, see, and that's why we're here today. That's exactly to have these conversations because, like, I have yet anybody you talk to, like, that is going to be so cool to see come to life. And even what you're going to learn in that process of, of building this and running that is going to be groundbreaking in this industry of vertical. How do you go vertical and offer two different types of techniques of cultivation, especially if you're in a place where the sun is so prevalent? Absolutely. Dude, Russ Brandon, Surreal Yields. I always want to say Sean. I know uh, we're masked up again. We don't like to do faces, no. you know? But, uh, man, we appreciate you guys having us. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate you. This is one of the most interesting aspects of what I find in the industry is this collaboration. And now we're finally starting to see OGs in the industry come together. Instead of building their own brands and fighting it out, we're literally seeing collaboration at the ground roots. And not only with just OGs, but also with organics, now with data-driven results. You would have thought Sean from his history is a salt-based grower, multi-tier operator, and now you're seeing the integration of what Brandon Russ does best, organics, and organics at scale. What happens here at this facility, the amount of knowledge that's gonna come into the cannabis space, not just because of organics, but with salt-based nutrients, with efficiency, uh, a lot of stuff, just like they do with other experiments, a lot of stuff we don't even know yet. 
Uh, that's the reason we wanted to come out here and cover this. As Soon as I heard this collaboration was happening, first smoke of the day, we put together the team and we came out here. You're seeing it at the ground floor. It's the reason you're not seeing a ton of plants everywhere in full bloom rooms. This is just starting. But this collaboration, this is something very important that we feel we need to highlight. Um, and I think it's important that you guys see where this industry is going over the next 10, 15 years because this right here, this represents it. First smoke of the day, Brandon Rust, Sean Stizzy. I'm Blackleaf.